Is that better now? Okay. okay, so we talked a little bit about uh, what we're going to do here tonight, kind of walk you through the process, uh, walk you through a live demo. Um, but I think um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge the again, another tragic event today of loss of a firefighter's life uh, on, on, in the theater district in the 700 block of Main Street. And um, just another in the seemingly endless list of tragedies hitting this community. And I, I know it's, it's frustrating, it's saddening, it's maddening. Um, but one of the things I was thinking on the way over here is that, you know, life has always been hard for people going back hundreds and hundreds of years. And one of the ways that people have dealt with the difficulties in their life is through arts and culture. You know, going to a play, immersing themselves in art or music is a way to smooth out life uh, and deal with those tragedies and be mindful and present in a, in a different situation. Uh, and, you know, the arts and cultures just move you to, uh, you know, put life in perspective. So uh, in a way, a lot of the work that's being done by your organizations is therapeutic for the community uh, and should certainly be saluted. The the county, I, you know, I've only been with Erie County for about four years, and it's uh, it's been really uh, rewarding for myself and the staff to be involved in this program. But this cultural um, contract for operating expense is not the only program the county has. We we um, just started this year a three year program for uh, capital grants for arts and cultural's small mid sized arts and cultural groups. So. We funded the first $8 million. There's $25 million in total that the county executive polling cars put into uh, a fund from uh, much higher than expected sales tax revenues last year. So that's a three-year fund for capital projects, separate application process. Uh, but we'll be starting that up again um, probably um, three or four months. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and we also um, applied for and received grant funding to prepare an Erie County cultural plan uh, to kind of guide the high level uh, some of the uh, investments and activities and initiatives uh, around the arts and cultural group and try to come up with some kind of a overall cohesive theme of how arts and culturals can be um, uh, working collaboratively, uh, can uh, expand services in new and different ways. Uh, how the government, whether it's the county or other levels of government, can help arts and cultural groups, what are the needs. Uh, so uh, I would anticipate that a number of folks that are uh, here tonight and listening will be involved in that program. Uh, once we get started, we're just working through the paperwork now with the state. So uh, again, a lot of exciting things we're involved with uh, and in behalf of the arts and cultural space. Uh, this slide uh, behind me is a, an award that the county won uh, for this program from the National Association of Counties. And, you know, I, I just came back from um, a conference where we had a meeting with a number of county planning directors from around the state. Erie County is the only county that is investing in arts and cultural funding like this out of the entire state. So it's really, it's really great to see. And um, without that I, anymore, I think we'll get started. Okay, one of our partners in this organization is um, ASI Art Service, on a, um, Inc. And uh, they are available to help any organization through this process. Uh, if you're new particularly, you'd want to reach out to them. Uh, the contact information is here, uh, the people that are here. Uh, and they are, like I said, our partners to help you fill out good, thorough applications so that uh, you, you can be as competitive as possible for these funds. Okay, uh, last year uh, we, fund, we um, funded uh, about 114 arts and cultural operating grants to a total of about $7.7 .7 million. This is the most we've ever done in a year, most organizations, and I believe the most money uh, in the year. So um, it just shows the need out there uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's really meaningful when you can have some funding. Not all this funding's large. You can see, you know, some of these funds uh, grant requests are in the range of twenty five hundred dollars, but for some small organizations, that makes a lot of difference. 
Uh, and you know, so you'll hear about more about that. But um, you know, we we hope that there are new organizations each year that that are benefiting from this. So uh, you know, the average grant was sixty seven thousand dollars. Not a lot of money, but certainly meaningful for small organizations. Fitch. You want me to talk to this? You want me to talk to this one? Okay. So our um, the funding cycle is basically four general steps in the process, and we'll walk you through those if you've applied before, you're familiar with these. But really, the application, release, and submission is where we are now uh, in the process. Uh, and we're just uh, doing the applicant briefing, which is tonight. And uh, that's where we're also sending out our contracts from last year. Uh, so this is what we do in the beginning of the year to kind of get started. Important dates here for the level one uh, applications are due April 19th and level two and three are due April 26th. And we'll walk you through tonight what the difference is between those. But those are important dates to keep in mind in terms of the funding cycle. Uh, then our Department of Environment Planning will work with uh, all the members of the uh, Erie Arts and Cultural Advisory Board. All of the applications are assessed for completeness, uh, and we might come back for more information if something's not entirely clear. Uh, but all of the applications are reviewed, and uh, there's feedback provided, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that process tonight. Then funding recommendations are made. Uh, they go to the county executive's office as part of the 2024 budget process. So that would be in uh, probably July when that as draft budget gets put together. Uh, and then it goes to the, um, I guess in September, it all is released to the legislature and then they'll review it uh, in October, November, approve the budget, and then the funding will be set that way. So just same way it's been the last several years as it fits into the the budgeting process. One of the things that we I, I keep saying that, well, if you've been through this process before, you'll understand and it'll be familiar. We understand that some are, some organizations are new uh, and some have a lot of staff turnover. And so it's really important if you have had staff turnover uh, to work with us, uh, work with ASI, uh, to to walk through this. So it's really not a very onerous process, but uh, it can be complicated if the person that's been doing it for the last six or seven years is no longer in your organization. So uh, we understand that and, you know, we try to help wherever we can. So with that, I'm going to introduce Connie, who will kind of introduce the, the board and talk a little bit more about the process that we'll go through. So thank you very much. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate it. I'll put my water bottle here just in case. Well, my name is Connie Campanero. I've been on the um, Arts and Cultural Advisory Board since 2019, and this is my second year as chair. We'll be covering a lot. It's sort of like drinking uh, water from a fire hose, but we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Um, it's the first in-person session that we've had since I don't know when, and I was very excited about it, but it looks like we've got probably five times more people attending virtually. So I won't be able to do like, raise your hand if you've never done this before. <laughs> um, but I, I, it'll come out. Eventually it'll come out. Um, picking up on something that, that Daniel mentioned, another reason to um, let Mary Lee know that you've got had some transition in your staff is because she has a very robust list of people that want to know when the grant has been released, <laughs> what's going on with the grant, um, when can I get into the portal? So if she's telling people that don't even work at your organization anymore, she might as well, you know, be yelling into a cave, I guess. Um, so that's another reason to keep us abreast of your staff changes. And there were a lot this year, I think, in the arts and culturals. I expect that will just continue happening. Um, I wanted to mention that um, my background before starting a consultancy seven years ago is in arts and culture. Um, and I'm doing this because I want people to submit the best possible grant application. This is not about a gotcha moment. Um, it's about helping you to submit the strongest application you can. Uh, I know what it's like to um, be in the nonprofit arts and cultural sector 
to be on a board that has no staff for an organization with no staff to run an organization with 100 people on staff. I know what it's like to have programs fail and not meet their goals, to have a weather emergency shut everything down, a facility emergency shut everything down. Um, it's, you know, we're always ready for the next surprise and we're always planning for the next potential uh, succession and planning for when that grant maker doesn't give us a grant this year. What's plan B? So I genuinely just want everyone to have the best possible um, application. So one of the things we're going to cover are like, what are the red flags that we look for? And what are the, some, some of the most common mistakes? Um, so when I say we, I'm talking about the, the board and the staff. And I can see with the, there's almost a call. I can see it over there. Okay, so we, we do have a 15-member board. And we, like you, we try to keep our board diverse, both in their expertise, their backgrounds. So we have um, nonprofit leaders, arts and culture, from the no, people from the non, arts and cultural sector, grant makers, um, grant writers, folks that have expertise in law, finance, accounting data management. Um, we have folks from Snyder, Williamsville, East Amherst, Orchard Park, Hamburg, the city, of course. But we that, that, that might be one of the hardest diversity points for us, to, the goals for us to meet, is we really are trying to get representation from all across the county. And every year, I feel like we, we get better at it. Um, so this is our board for this year, uh, includes a couple of new folks and the staff as well. What we do and what we don't do, <laughs> um, unlike private foundations that you might be applying to and even the state applications, we're not evaluating your art. We're not evaluating the quality of the programming and whether or not it meets with my pleasure or anyone on the board's pleasure. Um, what we're doing is instead is we like to call it an annual checkup. And we equate that to your annual physical when you go to the doctor and they're going to check your blood pressure and the like, right? We've all been there. So the points are pretty much the same every year. And um, if nothing else, the fact that Erie County takes what the ink is barely dry on the check and we're talking about the next grant cycle. <laughs> so the fact that it takes so long, it, it really does help you build up a kind of your own great copy points to describe your organization, get all of your documents in order. So by the time you're done with this grant, you're all set to go ahead and apply for more. So the, among the things that we look for, because we want to know that the organization is healthy, we're using public money to help support it. So we definitely want to make sure that it's the right decision. So we do look at your governance, uh, your management and planning, your fiscal health. What is your community impact? Um, how well does your programming align with your mission? Now, at some point in history, your organization was founded and it was founded to fill a gap. Um, and then there, there was a vision and there was a mission. And then finally, you define what the programs were. The programs might change or be fine tuned or get different with technology, but the programs are all in support of the mission. So how do you know your programs are supporting your mission? How do you know you're getting closer to that vision that you identified back when your nonprofit was first founded. Um, we're going to ask you, did you thank Erie County publicly? <laughs> we like to see that. So you can send us any example of that. Um, we do want to see your demonstrated ability to be equitable, to be diverse and inclusive in your work. Again, this is taxpayer money. And one of the jobs that the board has is to sort of safeguard the notion that these services are for everyone to enjoy. They're accessible to everyone. 
and everyone is able to enjoy them. And I've lived in a lot of different places and I, I am, forgive my French, I am damn proud of Erie County's arts and cultural scene. And um, it's unlike any place I've ever lived. And the fact that it is accessible and the fact that for just about any range of dollar, you can find something that's going to blow your mind and really be an experience that'll make you think differently, see things differently, or just have a good time and forget your troubles for an hour. Um, it's important that everyone can access the arts. Um, there are, and, and the fact that there are independent reviews and that we do get together as a group to discuss our reviews, we think makes these more competitive and so will make your organizations more competitive. Um, we, if we feel strongly that something could have been done better, then we'll let you know in the letter um, that you receive. And if you have any questions about the letter or if there's something in the letter that you didn't quite understand, we've had Zoom calls with folks that wanted to talk about their letters. So um, it's an open door policy and we genuinely mean that. So again, we're talking, this is literally our little report card here. <laughs> there's nothing to hide. So we want to know about how do you measure success, like I just covered? How do you know your programs are reaching your goals? How many served? Um, how are people accessing your programs? Any other measurements that you have that would determine whether or not this program is of value? Um, we want to see that you are... Um, that you're building up your chest, your war chest of funders and uh, grant makers, and that you are building up a community of support because you can be a very eloquent uh, grant writer and get government funds or have a few connections perhaps, but if you don't have a community of support, your attendees, your volunteers, the other people that really want to make sure this is a success. That's where you build up your donor base and are all those things there. Um, so when you tell us about your programs, we want to hear about the programs where your organization has skin in the game, where you have financial risk since you are asking us for funding. So we want to see those programs. When you do outreach and partnerships for the purposes of building new audiences, that's great too. And there's a lot of places where you can talk about that. Um, tips and best practices. There's a list. I'm not going to repeat everything that's on the list, but um, get about your attachments before you sit down to start writing to start writing the grant. So um, your taxes are due five and 3.5 months after the end of your fiscal year. So if your fiscal year ended June 30th, your taxes were filed September 15th. So you've got your most recent tax filing check. I'll talk. I'll think about it. <laughs> you've got your most recent tax filing. You have your most recent uh, CPA or management provided set of financials so that you have your bylaws. You've got your documents in place before, before you start writing the grant. Because one of the things we see is contradiction. Um, the form that you fill out, both on in the portal, when you say how much you're asking for, when you say what your total expenditures were last year and the year before, and there's a form where you fill out all this data, it seems repetitive. But it should at least say the same thing that your tax filing said and then your CPA financial said. It shouldn't contradict. These four sources of information should all be consistent. 20 or $40, fine. But I've seen some amazing variants. And so I encourage you to get your documents in order even before you sit down to start writing your grant. We want to see your most recent tax filing not sure, you know, 2018 fat tax filing. We want to, we want you to stick to the question, but you hear that from any other funders. Stick to the question, answer the question. So when we ask you, 
what is it you're trying to achieve with this money that you're asking for Erie County? When we ask you that, don't just repeat your mission because you already told us what your mission is like two pages ago. Tell us more. That's why we asked the question because we wanted more information. Um, some red flags for us, dated government documents, governance documents, but the bylaws haven't been updated. That's uh, immediately, it's a red flag. And those of us that are doing this, after a while, you just know. <laughs> um, lack of succession planning is a really big red flag. If the founder hasn't budged in 25 years and everybody's in denial that life is eternal, that's a problem. <laughs> um, so is there succession planning both for board seats, board of directors, board officers, and all of the leadership positions in your organization, what is the plan B if somebody were to leave or something unpredicted happened to them? If the whole nonprofit is going to crumble because there was no plan, then it really wasn't publicly supported to begin with. And here we are talking about spending public money on it. Um, Lack of unrestricted reserves are a red flag and inconsistent data. I've already mentioned inconsistent data, so I'm not going to get into that again. But that's really easy to fix. It's really easy to check before you hit send. Um, diversification on your staff and board. I know that you, a lot of you might feel like we're kind of nagging a lot. And if the <laughs> best way to get us off your back is Tell us, what are, what are you doing? What are you doing? What have you tried? What can we expect to see? It, um, like anything else, I'm not saying that it's the most difficult. There are a lot of other things about running an arts or organization that are more difficult. But you still try. You still try and you tr try and you try. So tell us, what are you doing to try to make sure that there is diversity on your board, leadership of your staff, how you choose your contractors and vendors, and what are you doing for the population of Erie County, the diverse population of Erie County. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what you're trying. Tell us when you think you'll be ready to move on and try something else if it's not working. Um, and another thing would be we want to see your... Uh, all of the do documents that you're attaching, your whistleblower policy, your, uh, your bylaws, show us the ones that are in action right now, um, not the documents that you hope to put in place later this year. That can be attached uh, in the area where we invite you to submit um, more. Anything else you want us to see, attach here. That would be the place to do that, say, so that we see that you're working on it. But um, we want to see the ones that are in play today. Some of what we ask for, we understand that it is a, um, it's a little bit of a burden because it's not required by New York State law. Just a couple little things. One of them is a whistleblower policy. We do want anyone that asks for Erie County money to have one. But we've also provided a template for you. You don't have to try to do it from scratch and then worry that the evaluator is going to find 14 things wrong with it. Just get the template. Um, and there are a lot of other tools that we're here to help you, to help provide for you to make it less of a burden. Um, this year, some of the things we've changed, we have clarified some of our questions um, because we started to see trends where the answers weren't really lining up with the question. So we thought we would try a different way of asking the question. Um, we removed the cash flow forecast from levels two and three. It is no longer required. Uh, and the maximum you can ask for is uh, slightly adjusted as well to keep up with the um, uh, New York State 
adjusted what you're required to provide, whether it's an audit, whether you can just do CPA financials and so on. So we adjusted to um, 20% of your most recently completed fiscal year actual operating expenses. So we want to assume that that is your 2022 fiscal year and that by now you know what your actual operating expenses were. You've closed the books on that year and you can calculate what 20% of your actual operating expenses were to determine which grant level you might want to apply for. Um, or you can, level one really is the most popular level uh, by far. So um, that's, that, that's obviously everyone would apply for level one. Um, so here's, a, here's our chart that spells that out again, um, which level you might be applying for. So if, you're, if you spent $255,000 or more, you're, you could be applying for level two. Um, what is an arts and cultural? You know, that truly is a definition that is always evolving and ever moving and up for debate and up for opinion. But for the purposes of deciding how we're going to spend this money, we have to come up with a definition. So here it is. So um, your organization fits one or more of these descriptions. You're located and provide services in Erie County. If you have a fantastic event that draws from Canada every year and Niagara County, we're happy for you, but you're wasting your time if you spend a lot of your essay on that because what we want to see is how you're serving Erie County. So focus on that. Uh, 501c3 organization with tax exempt status for at least a year. If you're new, you have... Um, your letter should show that you found a 501c3 for at least a year. You're registered with the New York State Charities Bureau and, and otherwise licensed to solicit money in the first place. Um, if you're exempt from registration, surely you know why you're exempt and you could tell us that. Um, we'll ask for, we've talked about this, your, a copy of your tax filing. Um, and then again, what are the fit one of these descriptions of a cultural organization. Every year we do get uh, nonprofits that are technically in another sector. They might be social services. They might be uh, for the public good. They might be a religious organization, but they have a really great cultural plan. And it's, it breaks our heart to say, you know what? Sorry, you don't fit, but that's the truth. We're, there are so many arts and cultural organizations that aren't at the table, <laughs> even though we're up to 114 now, um, that's who we want to come to the table, are the arts and cultural organizations that exist for the purposes of arts and culture, either presenting it, educating it, preserving it, exhibiting it. That's why your organization exists. Uh, again, here's another chart. It shows what you need to attain Patch what you should get ready right before you sit down and write your grant. These are the these are the attachments that you have got possession of. If if somebody's delegated this job to you, <laughs> somebody's smiling, <laughs> and and you haven't done it before, um, you know, keep keep circling the wagons until you have these attachments <laughs> because you're going to be referencing them as you fill out the grant application. So as you can see, level two, level three, same as every other year. If you're asking us for more, we're going to ask you for more. Um, so the application is longer. It requires more attachments and it does get a lot more scrutiny. Um, we're, we're looking at your strategic plan and things like that. Um, grants are for general operating support. And that I know we are rejoicing in. Because every other grant you're getting is asking you to use the money to fund this program. Nope, you can't spend it over on that program. It's got to be for this program. <laughs> um, use it only for 
our artist fees. Well, we don't do that. We don't do that. We're, we're inviting you to use it for general operating support of your nonprofit, however you wish. And the only things we ask that you do not do, and you're going to sign a, a, an agreement to this effect, um, that you're not using it to pay for capital improvements, capital expenses. Yes, that would include the permanent installation of things that stay with the building. Um, and to pay past debt. So if you owe somebody, owe a vendor money from two years ago, we're asking that you not use your grant for that. But I think it's a relief any time that a grant is for general overhead. Um, and finally, of course, funding requests are requests. Nothing is guaranteed. That said, how long has it been since Erie County did not fund the culturals more and more and more every year. How long has it been? Because I, I wasn't even living here when that happened, but we all still carrying that around. Like it could happen again any second. Um, it, they're not guaranteed, but if past history and recent years speak for itself. Um, Erie County has been extremely generous in the, in the worst of times. Uh, application attachments, these are some examples, which I feel we probably have already covered, and we'll go back to it if you have more questions, but many of these attachments aren't established by us, by Erie County, they're established by New York State. So New York State is going to say, well, if your revenues were a million dollars or more, and your fiscal year started after July 1st, 2021, where's your audit? We're asking you for a copy of it. We didn't, we're not the one that set that rule. I'm sure the line in the sand. So it really just mirrors what New York State uh, is requiring of you. Um, this next slide that shows level one fiscal data, this is to put an image to a comment I made earlier. So this is the simplest, simplest data form of the three application levels. So we're asking you, current fiscal year budget, you see this one? Maybe you can put a little marker over it, but so this is 2023. Current year to date, this, this is 2023. This final one on the, on the right, that is 2024. And we're asking you last year, 2022, and the year before. So you're being asked about four years of total revenue, total operating expenses, total assets, total liabilities. Make sure those numbers don't contradict the 990 you're giving us, the financial statements you're giving us, or an essay where you talk about next year, just make sure that everything syncs up and makes sense based on the other documents or demos. Uh, bylaws, conflict of interest policy. Most of those are great, I think. Most of them are fine. Sometimes we don't see that they are being signed by key persons. So if your founder is still kind of hanging around and maybe guiding the volunteer corps, that is a person of influence. That's a key person. Um, I would think that you might consider your CEO a key person. Um, and of course, your board members, um, they're signing, not only signing the policy, but they are disclosing conflicts that they might have or things that could be perceived as conflicts. So we do want the forum to have a place for them to do that. Um, and so sometimes we see that those statements aren't being gathered up and sent in. And that's an annual thing, of course. Um, you, you, you know, as soon as your fiscal year starts, and it's probably a note in your head to get everybody to sign it and turn it in. Also, before someone is 
elected to the board. If there is a nominee for the board for vote to become a member of the board of directors, that person had to have already signed a conflict of interest because that's one of the things the board's going to look at before they vote whether or not the person can come on the board. So that's another one that is often overlooked. Um, whistleblower policy we already talked about. Strategic plan for levels two and three. We do want to see your strategic plan. We don't want to see your um, 2015 to 2018 strategic plan. We want to we want to see the current strategic plan. And even if it's a dated one that your board has decided to extend because of the pandemic or something, let us know that. Let us know that it's still in play because your goals and um, activities were interrupted because of the pandemic. Just help us to appreciate that it's not a dated one. Um, optional additional attachment. You'd be surprised how many people skip over this. This is your chance to share whatever you want. Customer comments, your annual, your, the pretty annual report, not the one the CPA does, the pretty one <laughs> that the donors get. Um, links to uh, newspaper, new, newspaper stories or uh, TV news stories, or I've seen um, culturals attach national news stories. Like this is your place to say, when you're going through this thing and you're going, gee, I really wish they knew about X. Well, this is the place for you to tell us that thing that you really would want to brag about or explain something that you already know might be misunderstood for some reason. Go ahead and do it here. Um, we are going to go to a live demo and you can see if you're new, you can see all of it. And if you are coming back, you can see what is changed or streamlined every year we we do spend an excruciating amount of time trying to make it better um trying to streamline it trying to make it more clear um and we'll keep doing that every year so you will see a couple of subtle changes and then we'll have q a after that thank you All right, I don't know if we're good or not. Are we good? I think I need to share my screen, but hopefully everyone can hear me. You know what, I'm gonna do an incognito window, which actually is a good tip for anyone that's having issues with the, um, oh, that's why. Anyone that's having issues with your like your account won't log in for whatever reason to the website, try an incognito window, that'll probably fix it. So, hello everyone. Hello everyone remotely. My name's Maya Ortiz. I'm a senior planner with Erie County's Department of Environment and Planning, and I manage the day-to-day -day of the cultural funding operating support program. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough. I always recommend you just go straight to eerie.gov slash cultural because otherwise you're just going to be like clicking a million buttons. Yeah. Eerie.gov slash cultural. The login is on the top left. But before you log in, if you, your organization hasn't done this in the last like three years, you're going to need an account, at which point you can go to the application. There should be a request an account right there. Click on that. It's really basic info. Probably just uh, organization name. Yes, no questions on whether you meet the definition of a cultural organization. As uh, we already talked about, there's the link to review it and whether you're a 501c3 and then your contact info. That gets sent to me. I will uh, basically give you an account and then you're able to log in. For this, once you have your account and it will be your uh, organization acronym, and it'll be like a random password. Put in the wrong password, one second. You go to the login on the top left, put in your info and you'll get a page like this. If you need to change your password, go to edit and then you can put in your password info here. You, can they see my cursor? Yes, okay. Uh, and, and you can just hit save at the bottom and that's all good. Now. 
If you're a prior applicant, you go to your submissions tab and there's the submissions I put in as Erie test. You can, um, you can start a new one. We just don't recommend it. If you already have one that you can just update. Um, the questions that were changed or updated or corrected have been fixed uh, regardless of which way you go. So if you want to update an application, click on the submission you want and hit edit. Everything else from here on is pretty much the same for every organization, regardless of whether you did it before or not. So here already some of the information is in there because I'm editing an existing application. Uh, but if you're a new applicant, these items will all be blank. I'm going to put, uh, as if I were the prior applicant, and you just put in your mailing address, uh, social media addresses, who's preparing the application, whether you came to a briefing, whether you're a CEO, whether you have a CEO, which is different from the grant contact or the board chair president, because otherwise we get basically the same info. And uh, whether you would like to receive the contract by email instead of in the by physical mail. It's up to you. You can check it or uncheck it. I don't want you to get some items are required to get it through. Mostly it's so I can contact you if something goes wrong or to see this is new. So now it's telling me you didn't fill out this question. My typing is terrible. So it will let you know if you're doing something that's not working. It'll show it at the bottom. And everything is required. Sorry. So like I said, we updated a couple of things. So this will uh, come up for you. Yeah. Excuse me. Like I said, my typing turns terrible. This is the one page that has like a million things that are actually required. And it's because I want to be able to contact you. If, for example, the um, the application was started but not submitted or if there was something wrong, I need to be able to contact you and we need to be able to get the contract to you if you get funding. This is where we get that info. We don't reach out to you again later on. We also wanted to know if um, many organizations use a PO box for their mail, which is fine. But we also want to know if your primary location where you actually provide all your services and programs is different. And if so, then provide... Uh, the address for that. Okay, we're on to the second page. As a prior applicant, you'll be uh, you'll have the funding acknowledgements. You'll need to update your see. This is from 2023, which means it was submitted for funding for this year. Because we're doing we're requesting funding for 2024. You'll hit choose file, go to wherever you have your items saved. This is attachment. A note that I've already labeled all my attachments as required. Oh, actually, that says 2023. It should say 2024. Everybody gets confused. And next. Now, if you wanted to, you could stop. Um, okay, so as a prior applicant, you have to go all the way through to save. I know it's not great, but for the most part, you should be able to hit next, next, next to get through. As a new applicant, it'll show you a save draft at the bottom here and you can come back to it later let's see so if we were doing the level three so i can show you all the questions let's see um and like i said this is a level three right set up for a level three so you're gonna have pretty much every single page on here. But if you're doing a level one, it'll automatically skip the questions and pages that do not apply for, to you as a level one applicant. And here, once you get past like page three, you don't have to answer every single question um, to get through to the next page. Only those first few have like required uh, to advance questions. We do want you to answer all of the questions, um, but we didn't want to stick you to one page to have to get that whole narrative done before you can move on to the next page. You, so you can, uh, you know, if you're working on a particular part, you can slide through these uh, and come back to them later. The questions are all relatively the same. Here again, you have all your different attachments. It'll show you the name, the attachment uh, labeling, additional information for the that whole fiscal or um, 
amount change from New York State that we kind of have based our items on. Um, I did want to mention that our, the financial statement, if professionally completed, should include a statement of financial position, a statement of activities, and a statement of cash flow. Don't send us just one. If especially unless if you're a very small organization, I understand you're probably going to have some sort of balance sheet, and that's fine. But if you had a CPA or someone experienced do it, please provide the entire thing as one file. We always remind you one file only, uh, the megabyte limit sometimes, if it's too big, it, it just won't let you upload it. So please pay attention to those and check the size of your files. And we're only allowing PDFs for every single file. So even the financial worksheet, which is an Excel that comes from us, please save it as a PDF sheet. And if you can find the uh, financial worksheet on the ear.gov slash cultural, but if you scroll all the way up and go to resources, you can always open that in another tab and go down to, here's the financial worksheets. And again, go back, add all your info, your financial essays. It's once you have all your info in there, it's pretty simple. For level one, your bylaws is only gonna ask you the first two items of, the, um, of what's in your bylaws. The reviewer on our end will check for all of these items though, but you don't have to input it. Levels two and three have to input it themselves and tell us where we should be able to find that information. So for data blast review, we mean that your board looked at it. Maybe you sent it to your council if you have that. And they said, yep, it's good to go. You didn't have to do anything, but you checked that it's still compliant with New York state law. And also with your organization's actual operations and mission. With date, most recent date of adoption, what we mean is that the board actually had to make a change and adopt. You had to make a change and the board had to adopt it. So they might be two different dates or they might be the same date. It depends on how it's going with your bylaws. Conflict of interest policy, we talked about that one a lot. Again, we asked for date of last review and date of adoption and all these items need to be in the, um, in the policy. However, you can also find that in the question Hold on, no. You can find it either in the template, which I have listed here, or there's the conflict of interest policy template and the whistleblower template. And you can also, if you click on that, we have copy pasted the law from, you know, where it is on like the New York State website that's clunky and doesn't have any punctuation. And we kind of sort of put it in here so you can see more easily all the, re the, the requirements. So this is what we, this is what we're checking on your policy. This is the minimum requirements from New York State and that's what we're checking you against. So all of that is saved on there. We go through, this one's for the whistleblower policy, very similar uh, format. And then you attach the actual files. Again, just click on the one, add it there and save it. Takes a moment and there you go. You do that for every attachment. Uh, and then we go into your board of directors information. So I'm just gonna put my name and uh, let's see. Let's say it's 2024. Uh, I don't know. I'm not very creative when it comes to this stuff. And let's say I've served four years or sorry, three years. Cause, and then you just hit add and it'll give you as many as you need. Um, this should match like your bylaws where it says this is how many terms we have and this is the maximum number of terms. You say maximum is, you know, 10 years total. We shouldn't be seeing someone who has been on for 20. <laughs> so just make sure you're following your own bylaws. Um, information on your board's demographic information. Oh, please make sure to use whole numbers. Um, don't say, so I guess it's better explained with the ethnicity and race. Uh, I am multiple races and I am Hispanic. So I would be one in multiple spots here. So it would add up to four, but you're really only talking about one person. Don't use like fractions or, or decimals or percentages. Just count 
each thing that is each category or characteristic that is represented by your board members. And we know this this is not a all encompassing list, so feel free to use none of the above for people who don't identify with any of these. Uh, this box here you can provide as additional information that's not captured above, for example, with your graphic, age, income, uh, professional and educational backgrounds, et cetera. Everything about your board that you would like to tell us. Um, board contributions, list your committees of the board and committees of the corporation. If you're not sure the difference, that is also, um, should be in here. No, committees of the board, committees of the corporation, we've um, added additional information. Yeah. And again, don't get intimidated if you're doing a level one. This is a level three. <laughs> just for, for time's sake, I'm doing just one uh, level with as many questions as possible. For workforce, please, again, address number of persons, not uh, salary amounts or percentages or fractions, whatever. Um, and this is how many people you employed the prior year or we're saying workforce, it might not be technically an employee. It might be a different category of person who provided work for you. <laughs> um, their current uh, budget, we mean like how many people do you expect to employ this year and how many are actually employed thus far. And then the demographics for your workforce, both in leadership and non-leadership positions. Any additional information for them? And then we changed the format of the five highest compensated consultants et cetera, and the five pilot compensated employees slash staff. So that's a little easier. Uh, review of the executive director. If you do want to see, that's what I was going to get to, and I got a little distracted. If you do want to see the number of the type of questions for your level, sorry, I forgot where I put it. In application, you can scroll down, and here's the questions list documents. That's a Word doc in a, in a table format. So you can download level one, see what it looks like. Actually, let me just do it now real quick. Uh, that's not sharing with you anymore. One second, let me switch screens. Let's just do that. It'll be a little easier. So you should be able to see, well, interesting. You can ignore all the review changes. I'll update that. <laughs> but anyways, it shows all the questions for level one. So even with it being half pages and having the description for every attachment, it comes out to 10 pages. So again, a lot of these are the attachments and additional information, demographics. So it'll show you uh, all the questions that you need for for each level. Let's go back to here. Hopefully you can see the Google right now, the actual application page. These questions are the same as before. Um, we're seeing more and more organizations have an actual diversity, equity, and inclusion statement, which is awesome. Strategic plan, if you have it, Please attach it if, um, so it's not required of level one, but if you have it, please send it along. We'd love to see that. Um, and I believe it was presented in the, in the actual presentation earlier. You get additional points for that if you do have it. Um, about your services and programs, how you support racial, economic, and environmental justice. And I like to say that we don't expect that every organization uh, is going to be able to address this in a, in a, comprehensive way, but every organization can do a little bit. And we want to see what you have been doing. Your programs and exhibits, this again is a level three question and it just goes on. Uh, please do group your events. So you don't have to tell us that like every Monday class separately, just group all the Monday classes. If they're all painting, just painting Monday classes from January to June or whatever as one line, because otherwise it, uh, it can freeze it for you. Nobody wants that. Population serve audiences, uh, attendance goals, uh, the profile of the organization, like recognition or significance or recognition outside of the county, 
or even locally. And then you get to attachment C. This is available for everyone in the additional information box. You can fill us as much or as little as you want, but I do encourage you to use it. It does uh, have an effect on your uh, application if you do use it to give us extra information. So this is for uh, a prior application. If you're still working on it, don't check this box. Just go to preview. You'll be able to see your entire application, all of the items. You can go back and edit each section separately. It's each page separately. It'll also show you which ones are empty. So if you do like a control find for empty, it'll show you which ones you've skipped as you were working on things. And then you can scroll all the way to the bottom and go back to previous once you're all done. Oh, you can save it in that slide as well. When you're done, 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 that you're ready, like I'm not gonna work on, I'm not gonna work on this anymore this year at all. Um, then you can check the box, hit preview, save, submit, depending on, on the, on whether you have a new application or a prior application that you're editing. Then you hit save, that sends me an email. Um, if I somehow get like multiple emails from your account, I'm just not going to look at anything until the due date. So I'm another thing. If you submit ahead of the due date and I notice an error in your application, I will contact you to tell you there's an error. Please fix it. And you have until the due date to submit it correctly without a penalty. So if I'm getting a bunch of emails from your account that you're resubmitting again and again and again, I'm just going to have to ignore it so I can get to other applications until after the due date. And at that point, if something's wrong with your application, I may still give you time to correct it but you'll get a penalty. Okay. Again, if you want to see your submissions, you go on here. It'll show you, I believe, uh, it'll show you when it was originally created, but you can go back in um, and edit, unless you've submitted it by clicking the button. Was there any questions at this point? I, I know we're past the time and I think the library closes at eight. So I don't want to uh, hold the folks here Damn. much longer. Well, uh, actually I'd have to, on the budget part, mm -hmm. she said, you first, the first budget is 2023. And then we have to project 2024 and 2025, let's say. <laughs> But 20. So you're saying that it shouldn't be so much off base. It's usually, you know, what you're looking at, if you did well in 2022, you ex your expectation for 2023 should be maybe 5% more. So are you saying that's how 24 should look based on what we see, what we're working with with 2023? Yeah. Uh, can you carry out that? Gross. Uh, go ahead, Chuck. Okay, so the question was, sorry, I don't know if I needed to do that. You project it, but. Yes, how to, how much to estimate the projected budget from your F current FY budget? Yeah. I think, yeah, so let, let me know if I'm answering your question. Growth of expenses and growth of revenues have at it. That's what we want to see. Um, what we don't want to see is inconsistencies. And you say last year, your total revenue was one and a half million dollars. But then you give us a tax filing that shows that it wasn't even a million. Like, so where is the information coming from? So there's supporting documents should support your own data sheet. Yeah. And I said, what's the problem? Benton, like, if there is no uptake to, let's say, your policies, there, I know there's a sheet that we have to submit saying that each board member will be viewed. Does that have to be updated even though there is no change in whatever, whatever policy that we're looking at? Correct. The disclosure forms, because they're required by the state, or is it state and, and IRS? A legal well, date. Yeah, the individuals in their own lives, they might have had changes. That's why you want to do it at least annually. So if, you know, my kid started a landscaping company and they're, 
they're hitting up the arts organization for, you know, fine. If the whole board agrees that that's the best quality provider for the most reasonable price when the whole board talks about it. But maybe three years ago, my kid wasn't doing landscaping. So each person's life might have changed since then. So they're still going to do it. If the language in your policy hasn't changed because it's already the best it can be, <laughs> it's still being executed and it's being doing to be do it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, and for a new board member, they're going to review it before they're even voted on. So thank you. Liz. Thank you. Okay. When you were talking about the workforce question, so it encompasses a lot of different roles that I think all eight sort of that unpaid So I believe it includes all of them. Um, if you're not, um, it was for economic impact out of the, so it's paid. Yeah, we talked about the nine, not 1090 notes. What? Yeah. yeah. Ten, you're 1099. So a lot of organizations aren't there yet where they've got payroll. Um, but yet if the county is trying to get economic impact data, especially for the upcoming plan, if you have an independent contractor who's kind of handling everything, we're suggesting that you might go ahead and put it in there because nobody's on the payroll yet. That's, we were, we're hoping to include. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think, uh, the first if I remember correctly, the first table says paid and unpaid workforce. And then in the demographic detail, it was uh, it was just paid workforce. Yes, that's where. <laughs> I had another question. Yes. Um, can you clarify what it is that would send you multiple emails yeah. while we're the main to <laughs> the, That little checkbox right before the preview page. So it's the checkbox on page 23. So Check it and save it. It gives you an Yes. So don't check it until you're completely, absolutely done for the year. Yes, I'm a little question. Okay. Um, I to beat that order. No. Not Sorry. The question was, have the feedback <laughs> letters been sent? Yeah, not yet. They are in final review and editing, and hopefully we'll go out soon. That's why the grant question says, how will you address? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, so question is, is it possible for the same person to get a workforce question and a consultant question? Yes. Uh, the consultant question, I, I want to mention, the consultant question should probably match your uh, 990, your tax filing. Uh, I believe it asks for the five highest compensated. Um, so. Keep that in mind as well as you go through. Uh, but yeah, they could be included twice um, because we're looking at um, additional information as far as the consultants and all that. Any further questions? So it's been urging us to update last year's application. So Yes, if you have last year's, if you applied last year, it's available here and you can just update it, new numbers and anything else that needs to be, you know, brought up to date. So would you want to see updated mirrors regardless of whether things have changed, right? Well, I mean, if it hasn't changed, I suppose you wouldn't have to. Like, I mean, the mission statement question, I don't think that would change. Uh, but most everything asks about your current or uh, projected year like the funding year. So you'll probably have to change it from 23 to 24. Yeah. It's a, it's a shortcut. <laughs> Any, oh, are you able to print a hard copy of the application prior to submission? Yes. When you are in the, um, the final page, I guess I shouldn't have actually submitted it. <laughs> when you're in the final page on page 24, uh, you can do a where it shows all of your items and it lets you go back to edit. Um, you can print it there. Um, I would do a print to PDF or print from your browser. Okay. 
Um, one last question. If applying for staffing support, is that for a future staff member after we receive the funds? Can it be for additional hours added to a current staff member? Yes. It can be either way. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're just asking that you don't pay uh, pay an old debt with mm -hmm. with your 2024 check mm -hmm. or your 2023 check. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's your staff member. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's fine if it's a future staff member that you haven't hired yet. As long as it's, that's just all accounted for. Okay. Thank you, everyone. If you have more questions, you can tune in tomorrow, <laughs> 630, again, hopefully with less technical difficulties. Feel free to call me or email me. Um, let me bring up this slide with my contact info for anyone who needs it. <clears throat> tomorrow, uh, 630 in Ham or Hamburg Library in person or virtually. Thank you, everyone. Thank Very you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A stage presentation, a um, literary media arts, visual arts, performing arts, um, and by the same token, if the organization is does not state in its mission and purpose for existing that it's arts and cultural in some way, shape, or form, um, but it happens to have a program that incorporates art, those are the hard ones that we often have to say no to as well. Um, so if you're a social service organization and you're having a poetry slam, we think that's great, but we can't, we have to draw the line somewhere. Um, that does not mean that you are an arts and cultural nonprofit. It means you're a human services nonprofit. Um, one more time, application levels. I like to say, if you're asking for more, we're going to ask you for more. So <laughs> levels two and three, you just you have more work to do. So there is a strategic plan. There are a lot more questions that you are asked, um, and likely a lot more questions that we come back and ask you if you're a level two or three, um, if you're requesting a level two or three. Uh, that's a handy little checklist for when you're getting ready to sit down and start your grant. These are all the attachments that you need. Um, grants are for general operating support, and we celebrate that. I hope you're applauding, too. We're not going to say, no, you have to pay for just this presentation. You have to pay for just this series. Um, pay for what you need to pay for. Just don't use it for capital improvements, for uh, building a building or outfitting a building, or there's another, we just learned, there's another grant for that. Um, and don't use it to pay for old debt. Don't use it to pay off an old debt from past years. Use it to pay for what you need to operate in the year that you applied for. So this would be 2024. And uh, we'll make sure you don't get it until 2020. <laughs> this whole thing takes a year. <laughs> uh, but we're here to answer any questions. Uh, ASI is, um, is, is there for you as well. They are your advocate. And um, feel free to come to us or, or ASI. If you have a question or need a hand, there are no bad questions. Anyway, thank you very much. Joe Parker. And So we'll go through the live demo. Um, I'll go through this briefly. Uh, I think Connie basically covered all of it. Uh, but if you want more detail, the presentation will be available. And this information is also copied on the website itself when you go to the application page, which I will show you. Um, this is the worksheet attachment C. So we want to make sure that this information matches your financial statements and your tax filing for the appropriate year. Don't contradict yourself that this is one of those things that we're talking about. The numbers should all match. Um, we talked about all of your policies and additional attachments. You can add more information if you wish. Like if you have a strategic plan, but you are a level one applicant, you would put that in under Z instead of I, because I just won't pop up for you. 
All right, live demo. Let's stop sharing the PowerPoint. It might take a minute for me to share the appropriate page. And it's not cooperating. What is that? Oh, that wasn't open. Apparently. Um, share. Move on. Hopefully everyone can see my Google page here. So you go to ira.gov slash cultural. I would recommend typing in the short link because otherwise you're going to be clicking through a million things. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Maria Ortiz. Uh, I run the, the cultural program, the general operating support cultural program for Erie County. Uh, my contact information is the one you see pretty much everywhere other than ASIs. So if you are a First time applicant, you haven't applied at least in like two, three years. The first thing you're going to want to do is apply for an account or not apply, just submit for an account. You go to ira.gov slash cultural, hit application, scroll down. There will be a link that says new applicants only request an account. Click on that. We have some basic info on here. And then I need some basic info from you. The organization name, whether you're a 501c3 and meet the definition of a cultural organization per the program guidelines. And you can review them right here your contact info, and then you submit. We will contact you with a um, organization acronym, which will be your username, and then you can log on. To log in uh, with an account, you can't access the application otherwise, it just won't work. You go to the top left and you put in the username we give you. And the first time you log in, it's gonna be a random, um, like a random password generated type thing but you can change it um, the first time you go to uh, sign in. I think I forgot what you said. Oh, no, I remembered. All right, once you have an account, you can go to edit once you're logged in and you'll have a page like this. You can change your password if you want here. And this tells you all the requirements, which are extensive, and then you can hit save and you'll have a personalized uh, password. The only thing is if uh, multiple people in your organization are completing the application, you'll have to share that account access. So don't use your personal one, use one that's good for multiple people to use for the organization. If you have done an application before, you would click submissions and they would be listed here for you. We did do a um, prior application editing yesterday, so I'm not gonna go through that in, in detail. But if you do have an application, you would click on the one and hit edit. And then it will open up your application with all your prior information. Uh, you change all the info you need to change. There's a couple of new questions that'll hold you up. All of the required uh, questions uh, do have that. Well, they're all required. There's no real optional questions except for like two and they're specified, but there's some that you need to fill out before you can move on to the next page basically. Uh, contact information is the biggest one on this page. And then I believe the next few pages have the uh, level information, which changes how the rest of the application shows up for you. If you do have a prior uh, application that you are updating, you will need to hit next through all of the pages until you get to the last one. And then you'll be able to save your changes. I, I know it's a little irritating, right? When you gotta do all that. So what I would recommend you do is go, sorry, not to application, go to resources. Actually, I misspoke. Do go to application. The questions are listed in a Word doc here that you can download and edit as you wish for as long as you wish, and then it'll be easier to just copy paste your answers in. Uh, for the level one, which we'll be doing in a little more detail today, it looks like this, which is better than last night's. <laughs> So, yep, you can fill up all the info. It's literally copy pasted from the uh, application itself. So this is exactly what it'll say in the application. You can fill it out and then go back to, oh, actually, I don't think my uh, online people can see that. One second. Because I was sharing Chrome, not the screen. Where's my Webex? There it goes. Um, one second, sorry. Okay, let's do that instead. So I don't keep confusing myself. Okay, now my online folks should be able to see a Word doc on the screen, hopefully. Yep, so 
same questions, and then you can fill that out, save it however you want. And this is not the page we want to see. There we go. There we go. And same for level two and level three. So you would come back and fill in all your questions and hit next, 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 one at a time until you get to uh, 23. Page 23 will have a box. So if this is your second or third year, uh, well, your third or fourth year, you'll know that that's the box that tells me, that actually sends me your updated application. Don't click it until you're completely, 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 absolutely 100% done. <laughs> So you can save multiple times, just don't click that box and save until you're like absolutely done because that sends me an email and I will immediately go in and try to uh, download your application and check it for any errors or corrections needed. And if I start to get like a bunch of these from your organization, I'll have to ignore them so I can get to other ones. And then I won't be able to let you know if you have any errors so you can correct them before the deadline. If you do submit at or after the deadline, then you get a penalty for those errors that need to be corrected. But if you submit early, I can let you know if there's an issue and you can do, um, correct them and submit before the deadline and be good. So it will remind you that you haven't saved your, um, your changes, fortunately. So do listen to that and try to save before you close out. If you do um, need to make a new, application, you would just hit the 2024 funding application because I am logged in. It actually went to the application. If you're not logged in, it's going to say you don't have access. Now, this is another way you can access your prior submissions with this line at the bottom of the screen that hopefully you can see, I think, probably. Um, this line might not show up if your screen is not maximized. It depends, especially with a Mac. It might not show this line at the bottom. So make sure your screen is maximized. Not, don't just drag it bigger, make sure you actually maximize it and you'll be able to access your previous submissions. But if you're a new applicant, uh, you could do it like this. Um, so 15 minutes. All right. So I'm only going to go through a new applicant example. Um, for whatever reason, this URL is very specific. So I would recommend you copy paste it from your screen, uh, from your browser, like I did. And I'm gonna, most of this information is pretty basic. I'm keeping it, we're doing this quick. And please ignore my terrible typing. I do want at least two points of contact. So if, uh, and I forgot to mention this last night, if your grant, the grant contact the person doing the application is the same as your, um, I'm gonna skip all this so we keep it like, oh, I wanna answer that the other way. Is if the person completing the application is your board chair or president, please find another contact to include here. Um, you can leave me a note that it's actually the treasurer or whatever, as long as we have more than one contact info. I'm gonna put you, Thomas. <laughs> you just go through. So like Connie said, your best bet is to get all of your attachments, answer all your questions, and then you can just go boom, 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 add everything right away. We ask if your fiscal year has changed. I know some organizations went from like July to June or the other way around, whatever it may be. Please let us know. Here you can put in all of your uh, actual operating expenses for the past couple of years. What you're requesting, please note this one uh, is required to actually move on to the next page. So I'm just going to put 1,000 for now. And that would be a level one. And see how you have the save draft option. You can save it each time, each page, when you are doing a new application. So beyond those very critical items that shape the rest of the application and give me contact information, you can go through as many pages as you want to fill in the information. You can go back if you want to. You can't skip all the way forward, unfortunately, but you can go back. And if you click one of these, it'll take you back to that page. You just can't skip forward because the entire application is an if then type setup. And um, as you can see, we are asking what Connie mentioned, clarify your exempt status. If you don't know, 
please check with uh, your accountant or treasurer or even call me and I can give you maybe a little more info. Some of you or prior organizations didn't know they had a charity 500, but it was a part of their 990 submitted to us. So you can check your 990s if you're not sure and see if it's in there and your accountant already took care of you basically. Um, so for the attachments, and I have mine saved on the desktop, I believe. So all of your attachments have to be labeled as explained. Oh, this should be attachment B. So there's that. Attachment A is not required of uh, new applicants, which is what I'm demonstrated right now. So you would label your file as explained in the instructions for next year. Make, remember to do that. Uh, it'll let you know this file size limit and the type. So don't try to upload an Excel or a Word doc, whatever. They all have to be converted converted to PDF. And I do have um, under, I think it's under resources or um, no, under how to apply, I think. I have some guidance on what how to convert and or make your PDF smaller. And if you're not sure and then no one handy can help you, just call me. Um, and the file size limit, because if you try to attach something too big, it's not going to work. Uh, and you can attach all of your documents right away, or you can attach them as you get them. Just don't submit until you have all your documents, please. Your bylaws, your uh, conflict of interest policy, and your whistleblower policy. For level one, we're just asking you for the attachment itself and for the date of last review, which means that your organization looked at it to make sure it was compliant with all the applicable laws and also that it still represents your organization and how you operate. The most recent date of adoption, we mean that you noticed something was wrong at that point or different, you made a change and then your board adopted that new policy. They might be the same date, they might be different dates, just put in um, the most accurate date you can. If you are a level two or three, this page is much larger and it's gonna ask you to identify the sections um, required by law for these policies and best practices in the case of bylaws. Um, so this is a little where, this is one of the pages where it's much longer for higher level application level. Um, then you've attached your files, just like I had demonstrated, I'll do the whistleblower policy, attachment H, is it H? Oh, wait. No, I'm having issues. Oh, no. And your computer will definitely be non cooperative. Age, it takes a minute. It attaches. Oh, if you have one there as a prior applicant, it'll probably, it would say ec.h.2023. Just remove it. Takes a second. Choose to file again and put in the correct year. If your, um, most of your documents should be updated. Uh, especially your financial documents should be updated for the new year. It should not be the same as last year. We ask for your board of directors information, their demographic information. For um, Please make sure to use whole numbers. Uh, if a person, in the, for example, identifies as a Black Hispanic, you would put a one in each of these lines. Don't try to do like 0.5, don't do percentages, fractions, whatever. Just put one, each of these categories or characteristics is represented by a person on your board. We do ask that you provide us more, well, we give it up to you. It's optional to provide uh, additional information about your board's diversity. Maybe it's geographical, like the county tries to do with our county board, uh, arts board. It might be age, it might be income uh, or professional background. It might be different abilities. Whatever is different about all your board members, let us know, because we can't encompass all of that in one little table, you know. So here we uh, updated this page to say workforce. We specify paid workforce and unpaid workforce is where you would put your more volunteer folks. And then uh, the leadership and non-leadership position breakdown of the demographic characteristics. Again, if it's female, Black, Asian, Hispanic, you would put a one in all of those. And again, you can tell us more about your workforce's diversity. We, uh, these are questions that we've been carrying for multiple years. We're committed to diversity and inclusion. Tell us about how you support that. 
uh, and your diversity, equity, and inclusion statement. Information about your programming, how you support racial, economic, and environmental justice. And we know that these are really big issues, that it's, it may be impossible for any one uh, organization to, to have a huge impact on, but you are aware of them and you do what you can within your scope and your mission. Please let us know what that is. Uh, population served. If you have uh, data, please provide how you came about that data. Share it with us, um, whether it was in person or virtual. Uh, and if you have demographic information, please let us know as well. And then for level one, this is it. It skipped several uh, pages that you wouldn't have noticed as a level one. Additional information, here's where you can add more. Uh, I didn't save anything with a, oh yeah, I did. I was more prepared than I expected. This is a smaller file limit, just so you know. If you have like a video or something, you can just put the like a, a page, a PDF with the link to the video. We love those. I personally really love those. So you can save here as you've hopefully been saving when you're actually working on the application, or you can preview. And in the preview, it'll have every single section. It'll show you exactly what's empty still. So you can hit edit and go back to that page. Remember, once you are back at this first page, you have to go through each one to get back to the end and preview again. Um, so it can tell you everything that's not finished. And if this is an updated application instead of a new application like I did, uh, the prior page would have been the one with the little box. So I'm going to go previous. It'll have the additional attachment, and then when you, it'll have a next option for an edited application. And it'll have the little box, and I wrote real big on caution, only click if you're done. And then you click it, hit next, preview again, make sure you didn't skip any parts, and then you would submit. Once it's submitted, it kicks, it lets you know that it went through on the website. You will get an email to the contact email that you listed as the grant contact. So make sure you type that incorrectly. It does happen that, you know, we're all typing quick and get a typo. Uh, and I will get a notification that the application has been submitted and is ready for review. So don't submit until you're ready for review. Otherwise, just save as you go along. Okay. I am going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to check the chat. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, you guys can see the chat here. Okay. Um, let's see what questions that we have in the chat. That will be asked on a level two application. The level two has more detail on the Policies, it has, I believe, more detail about your audience and programs. And it asks for your full list of board of directors. Um, if you want, if you're trying to decide whether you should do a level one or a level two, and you haven't done it before, you should definitely do a level one. If you have done a level one and you're kind of on the cusp of being able to do a level two, take a look at the two. Um, no, one second. The two um, question pages, um, and that'll show you the like how a chain, what's different between the two. Uh, so you can see if the questions that you need to answer are something you can do at this point in your organization's uh, status, I guess. Is this shared? Is this not shared right now? Yeah, I think it's No? Oh, no. Oh, so the Word doc, sorry. I was saying download both the uh, level one and the level two Word doc and kind of look side by side to see what questions um, maybe. I don't think there's, honestly, I think there's more difference between level one and level two than there is between two and three. So it is kind of a jump uh, to go from one to two. And then let's see, what was the next Question, how do I open the chat? One moment, please. And then we'll go do um, in-person chat. Oh. Our in-person questions. 
must be submitted. Uh, I understand the application must be submitted electronically, but if we are supporting documents that are not electronically, how is that handled? Okay. And you prefer doing on paper. Yes. So you can print out the questions word doc. That would be the first thing to do. So you have the questions and you can write them out. Um, unfortunately, you probably then do have to type them up either in the application itself or in the word doc digitally. We don't accept paper copies. Um, if you do have something like a concert program, you'd have to scan it in. Um, the library, take a picture on your phone. Yeah. Um, yep. So it's not required. Um, the libraries do have scanning services as well. If you don't have that at home and your phone's like not really capturing what you're trying to show us, uh, you can send us uh, links, like I said, to videos in the application. You can send us, um, sometimes they have like big banners that they hang on different parts of their venues. Um, or when they're tabling an event or something, uh, you can also take pictures of that. Or if you have it on your website or somewhere, just send us a direct link in your application documents or um, in that additional information box. Um, uh, it is not mandatory to attend the briefing. But we have been kind of looking at organizations that don't attend the briefing and don't, how their applications come in quality wise. So we're, we're not taking points off at this point, um, but I we do recommend everyone attend it, which you ask you. <laughs> uh, Jen Swan says that ASI has dedicated office space where applicants can come in and use their intern and computer equipment to apply online if needed as well. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. Feel free to add uh, a few more questions, but then we have to wrap up. I'll uh, take questions from in person. Yeah. So, uh, this one's about a calendar reviewer split year, and it's not like a all of my 20 or my 20 can I send the most recent of each file just note it that and then if you do those two different errors they're not matched sure. right right but we will notice like your 2022 financial statements won't match your 2021 uh tax filing that's fine but the financial worksheet sure. will match your 2021 and your 2022 and then would you like Tax the 2022 tax and dude, whenever our tax oh, the, the, can you repeat? I'm sorry, can we then send that our tax information? Area. Oh, so the question was if you don't have your tax filings ready by the time the application is due, if you should send all of, for example, the 2021 documents since you don't have one 2022 document. Our answer is that you should send the most recent of every document you have. Uh, so the tax filing from 22 won't match, uh, I'm sorry, the tax filing from 21 won't match the financial statements from 22, but your financial worksheet and your doc, your narrative throughout will match those two documents. So they don't have to match each other, but they should be consistent throughout. Yep. Uh, did you have another question? And, 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 if, and when I do file the nine years. Oh, yes. Uh, if you, um, so the thing is the timing, if we can get it in time for the uh, reviewer to actually use it in their review, we will accept it. So just contact me when you do get it and I'll let you know, yes, we'll accept it or no. <laughs> the question was, um, if you get it later than the new tax filing, later than the due date, you can still send it to us. Um, I will let you know if we can actually use it for your review or not, depending how late it comes in. If the reviewer is still kind of looking at your application or hasn't gotten to it yet, depending how soon you send it, then we probably can. But if it's if the reviews are in, then it's kind of over. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, sir. Question about interns. I explored the burnt course is it just full time or like we have both the link problems with chain students on. The higher insurance team. What do you hear about? Was folks? So the question is whether temporary, part time, seasonal uh, workforce, even interns, so it might not technically be staff, 
right? Uh, whether they should be counted. Yes, please do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mary, this, I've got two questions. Okay. So first by thing, um, you know, if we have this long application, we're in the tier three group, um, and then we get back like a, a letter, a feedback letter that has like two or three ball points. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously you're, you're scoring uh, a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to see uh, more detailed feedback about our previous applications? Okay, so the question is, given the the extensive review that we do, whether we can see more detail than is provided in the feedback letters, uh, or whether the applicant can see uh, more fee more detail than in what is in the feedback letter. So answer one is yes, we've put more detail, especially about your uh, governance documents into the feedback letter itself. That's part of what's taken so long this year <laughs> to send you your feedback letters, which hopefully they will go out soon. Um, so that's part of it. And uh, before I switch to the next point, they, um, we did change the feedback question in the application to accommodate the fact that we're sending them so late. Um, so it doesn't ask only what have you done to correct the feedback, the, the yeah, the points that we made, uh, but how do you plan to do so for those that, you know, got them too late to actually act on it before the application was due, which we understand. The other answer, the second answer, the second part to it is that you can call us and we can set up a meeting uh, to go over the main points with you and provide more information. Also, if there's something in your feedback letter that you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just call me. Um, uh, either I will be able to clarify that on the spot, kind of look through your stuff real quick and, and see what we were talking about exactly, or uh, we can set up a meeting and talk about it in more detail. You had a second question? Yeah, so um, you mentioned that the budget uh, will be scored negatively if we have up essentially negative budget for a year. Um, in our case, we uh, basically had a surplus for many years and decided this year to hire a full-time development person who should, in, in theory, uh, you know, raise revenue in the future. Um, but this year, there may be a, a negative, net negative on our, you know, P&L, even though, like, we have plenty of cash for this thing. Plus other reserves. Okay. Yeah. So how will that be weighed in the do you want to come over here, Connie, so they can hear you? So the question is, if you have had, um, if you have a, a surplus, an accumulated surplus, um, and you're using that accumulated, accumulated surplus, and it puts you in a net negative this one year, how will that be scored? And I'm sorry, and this is a level two or three, right? Level three, yeah. Because we actually, uh, we actually came up with a question for that very thing. So you're going to have an opportunity to explain that. Um, we revised one of the essays the way that it's worded. So it asked, if, are, are there variances? Are there um, um, things that aren't repeating regularly? All I can tell you is the language is fabulous. Uh, <laughs> but there is an opportunity for you to explain just that. Is that level one? That was, uh, well... In level one, there are a couple of spots for you to add additional things that you feel like you need to explain. But I, I just recall that in two and three, we did we we did rework some of the language in the essays, um, and w and there were fewer prompts, so we tried to clean that up a little bit. Yeah. But also, as you see in the scoring, um, your financial health is looked as one category, and so maybe even if for whatever reason you're net negative. If, if you didn't explain, oh, we had a reserve that we're using for this, we would just see the net negative, right? So take up the opportunity to tell us why mm -hmm. things are the way they are. But also, maybe that is one major weakness and not several major weaknesses or no uh, no strengths. You know, so we use this. It's not just like nine or zero. It's just mm -hmm. kind of looking at on a scale. Any other questions? Oh, there's one in the chat. Let's see. Um, On your stage, so there's one. We can't hear the speaker. Uh oh. Oh, that was a little bit ago. Okay. Are there any considerations made for disruption due to COVID? So, when, what was it, 2020 and 20, 2021 funding year and 2022 funding year? We, no, and 2023 as well. Yeah. So, for several years, we had, um, 
considerations for COVID. And because, I mean, yeah, that was terrible all around. Mm -hmm. um, but we have removed them at this point. We expect that organizations are getting back to normal. Generally, if you are still affected by those disruptions, uh, tell us how you're doing. Basically, let us know what you're doing, um, how you're coming back or whatever the, the issues may be. Yep. You can even create a, uh, a PDF, you know, create an essay and talk yep. about that and make that your attachment Z. So attachment Z is really a great opportunity. Frankly, it, it surprises us when people don't take advantage of it because it's just sitting there. So you can attach um, your and the, the pretty annual report that you hand out to your donors. You could attach um, some news that you've had. You could attach some quotes from your audiences. You could attach an explanation of something. Um, I've seen letters attached. Um, expressing gratitude for the program, whatever you want to attach for attachment Z that you either feel you want, you have more that you need to underscore that is positive, or you feel like there's something that might be misunderstood, like what the gentleman just presented. Mm -hmm. Like that, That's your, your opportunity, at, even at level one, to do that. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions in person or on the chat? <laughs> yes, my favorite new letter. I like yep. that. Awesome. All right. So we're going to wrap it up for tonight. It's uh, basically 7.39, 7.40. Thank you, everyone. The library does close at 8, and they're going to kick us out. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Again, the uh, presentation will be online, and we will send out a mass email when it is. Please, if you haven't provided me your email, you're not sure, just send me, let me know. Call me, send me an email, whatever. Um, Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Happy grant writing. <laughs> Is that